Hi guys, thank you for joining me. I'm glad all my friends are here again today. Well, the live webcam is broken. Not surprising. They really put very little money into the infrastructure. I mean, why should they? When it might not be around anytime soon. Here is a capture of Old Faithful. It's really foggy there. Yeah, it was foggy here this morning also. Recently, USBS, oh, excuse me, USGS has admitted that there is up uplift going on at Old Faithful. Well, Old Faithful is part of the uh, Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. How many times have we seen or heard from Michael Pollan that there's no uplift going on? And he is saying that this uplift started in July of this year. Back in June, myself and many others noted that there was uplift going on there. Here's a quick Twitter post that um, was shared on, on Twitter showing the uplift. Many of you that follow me uh, would remember this. Now, this image on the left was taken a few months before the image on the right. Same photo, same camera, same tree. Yeah, and you can see how much the ground had risen. January 2021. There's the ground. There's the tree. Here it is in June of 2021. That's a lot of uplift in just five to six months. Any volcano can erupt within 10 minutes with no warning at all. We have seen this at other volcanoes around the world. So, why is the area around Old Faithful rising? Well, that's because of the magma chamber that is under Yellowstone. It stretches about 55 miles wide by about 75 miles long. And as the magma heats the water, and the other materials, the ground rises up. This is an indication that pressure is building and possibly have large earthquakes. They won't tell us exactly how much uplift has occurred. An article on MSN says that the uplift at Norris is relatively small. Well, for this resurgent dome, which is pictured here, in the background, that does not look relatively small to me. The largest uplift event in recent decades took place, according to Michael Pollan, was between 2013 and 2014, when the ground rose by 5 centimeters. So that would be almost 2 inches, 1.9 inches, in just 4 months. An indication that pressure was building. So, on March 30th of 2014, there was a magnitude 4.8 earthquake at the same site, the same area of uplift, representing the biggest earthquake at Yellowstone in almost 40 years. After that, the ground started to subside again. Here's an image from USGS showing the magma chamber. The upper magma chamber, made of rhyolite, is partially melt. And you can see it goes all the way up towards the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. Here we have the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. And they don't have it broken down very well, but here we got 10 kilometers in depth. That's the newest uh, reservoir, I believe, discovered in 2015. They have another one, uh, Basalt, which is, let me pull this over, which is about 30 kilometers down. Now, 10 kilometers is about 6 miles down. The upper edge, top of the rhyolite chamber, the upper chamber, is about 3 miles down. Okay, 30 kilometers. 30 kilometers is about um, 19 miles. And we'll come down here to the mantle plume that feeds all the way up to Yellowstone. You can see this is from the University of Utah. So the newest reservoir magma chamber with, that was found is this one right here, which is 12 to 28 miles below Yellowstone and nearly four and a half times larger than a previously identified magma chamber closer to the surface. 
This deeper magma chamber would fill the 1,000 cubic mile Grand Canyon 11.2 times, while the previously known magma chamber would fill the Grand Canyon 2.5 times, say, said Jamie Farrell, co-author of the study. He was uh, the previous scientist in charge before Michael Pollan. The upper magma chamber that I talked about, the smaller mag magma chamber identified several years ago, about three to nine miles deep below the surface of where everyone is walking, supposedly 2,500 cubic miles big. Last year, researchers published a study showing that the reservoir was actually two and a half times bigger than previously thought. So big is this volcano, it's been taking a very long time to recharge. About 6,000 years, it's been slowly recharging for another eruption. When it had its last super eruption, 2.1 million years ago, it just wasn't one great big explosion and it was done and over with. No, it continued to erupt for decades spewing out sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, all those nasty gases, kind of like what's happening with La Palma, with the uh, SO2, CO2 coming out. They said that was going to be done and over with within a week. And uh, what, uh, 50 days now it's been erupting? Um, sending out so much sulfur dioxide, it's actually starting to cool down the weather around the world. Can you imagine the effects upon the world when Yellowstone finally gets done recharging and has another eruption? Do you really believe that our government would give any of its citizens a warning to stock up and to prepare if Yellowstone was showing signs of an eruption? Most other countries warn their citizens, prepare their citizens for different types of disasters. Israel um, has a requirement that every Israeli citizen has a safe room that protects them from uh, gases that might be deployed during war. All citizens there are required to have a gas mask. Russia has built huge underground facilities for their citizens in the case of war. China has recently warned its citizen of some sort of pending emergency that's coming and for its citizens to stock, to stock up on food. The only thing that I can think of offhand right now is for adverse weather here in the U.S. If there's a tornado coming or a hurricane, they tell people they should evacuate or bunker down, get to a safe room. They don't tell people to stock up on food or water or medical supplies, things for your pets. No, they don't tell you to do that. Our government does not have any stockpiles of food or water for the citizens like most other countries have. So just why don't they do that? Why don't they train the United States citizens, the average people, to be, to be prepared for some sort of disaster, any type of disaster. The government has made no statement about China telling its people, something's coming, you better stock up on food and other necessities. Very vague they've been, and they've pulled back a little bit because they did not expect the swarm, the rush that people made to the stores virtually wiping out the shelves and causing inflation for uh, different types of vegetables there. Do you realize that here in the United States, they say, it's been well documented, our stores only have about three days of goods on the shelves. That's it. Look how many times there's been gas shortages because of an emergency where people cannot get fuel for their automobile or heating of their home. Why didn't the United States, before the pandemic occurred, which they knew was coming, before the shutdown was forced upon us, why did they not tell people to prepare 
for the economic disaster that was coming. They didn't warn people that because they were told to shelter in place because of the pandemic, you wouldn't be working. And if you're not working, you're not going to have an income to pay your rent. You're not going to have money to pay for your electricity or to buy food. No, there was no warning, nothing whatsoever by our government given to the people what to expect because of the lockdown. How it disrupted commerce, how it created inflation, how we couldn't get goods off the boats coming into our harbors, forcing the jab on so many people. And now it came out. You have two months to prepare because the U.S. government is going to go to the businesses and make sure everyone is vaccinated. Any business that has over 100 people working for them, they're going to require to show proof that those people are in fact vaccinated. We have lost our constitutional freedoms. Doesn't matter if you've had cancer or if you have other medical problems where you cannot get the vaccine. Doesn't matter about your religious beliefs. Doesn't matter if you believe it's your body or your choice. They're coming in two months. What is that going to do to the economy? What is coming that they're not telling us? China knows something's coming. Years ago, when I first got into volcanism, that was because of the eruption of the island of El Ural, there in the Canary Islands, and then it erupted, and I asked God, well, what should I check out next? What, where, where should I concentrate next? And he told me Yellowstone. So for about 10 years, I've been watching and learning and studying what's going on at Yellowstone. And as you know, USGS does not report the earthquakes. Here's one of the larger ones at 904 and oh, about 30 seconds. This is a borehole. This is a very deep well under the ground. Uh, this one here is for Madison River area. This is not a borehole. This is Maple Creek. And you can see the lines of melt. I've talked about the lines of melt, the pockets of melt. You know, there's actually pockets of melt, melted rock, about 600 feet under the ground where people are walking. This next one here, that is Little West Thumb. And this one here, oh, that one's also Maple Creek. I got two Maple Creek. Excuse me, I screwed up there. I wanted to put in Lake Butte. So here's the signature at Maple Creek. This is harmonic tremors. This means magma is on the flow. It's rising up. There's actually probably two earthquakes here. It comes in as a magnitude 2.82. And you will know that Hank Hessler, um, who's one of the geologists there at USGS, said when they started having earthquakes of magnitude 2, they would be concerned. This earthquake too, they're not reporting. It's at 209. They did report one at 208. That would be a magnitude 2.6. Stanley, Idaho. That's by the uh, Sawtooth Mountain Range. This here is the Snake River Plateau. And I've talked about how it does have an influence on this huge caldera. There's the spectrogram. You can see the heat that came up the gases that came up, the different lines of melt, and then there's several here, yeah. 1956, we got uh, volcanic and harmonic tremors. Also a sign that the volcano is recharging. Like I said, any volcano can erupt within 10 minutes, no warning whatsoever. Little West Thumb where they have that crack where dike intrusion is trying to erupt there at the bottom of the lake. We got what's the actual scientific term, blobs of magma. Yep, that is what's called blobs of magma coming up in the system. And they got some small earthquakes there. Let's check out its signature. Two marked in red, it looks like. Yep, volcanic tremors. 
volcanic tremors, and more blobs of magma. Even the static cam has not updated. See, it shows 9.40 a.m. That would be uh, mountain time there. Yeah, what are they hiding? Well, we know, like I said, we know why they do not put money into the infrastructure. Because it might not be there <laughs> long enough uh, to report. Well, they're not going to report, but yeah, why waste the money if it's not going to be there? I have heard reports that the deer, the elk, and other animals are also leaving the park. I don't know if that's true, but I do know the buffalo are leaving, and they're leaving early. I've talked about and showed you the trees that are dying from the gases of the volcano coming up from the ground, killing the trees, the forests. They all grew up during the quiet time. I've had multiple people tell me when they went to the park, the dead trees was just overwhelming how many dead trees are in the park. So anyways, I hope you guys get prepared for some sort of disaster. Yeah, Yellowstone is recharging. We don't know when it will erupt. Um, like I said, it could be with, with no notice at all. And heaven help us, it happens on a weekend when USGS and the University of Utah are home doing whatever. Yeah, because they don't work on the weekends. They don't report the earthquakes. So what are your thoughts? Please put those comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, you guys are just wonderful. And please subscribe. Um, YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. Um, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.